Well, thank you very much. Uh, this has been uh, just so fun to hear all this. And I use the word fun because I swear almost every talk the word fun has come up. Sabrina, you said it so much and it's so invigorating to see people having fun doing this stuff. So just very briefly, we have Donna Strickland at the end, Tony Leggett, Sabrina Pastersky, uh, Tim Shea, and Lauren Hayward. And um, I'm thrilled to, uh, to chat with all of you. And Sabrina, your, your, the title of your talk contained both the trees and the forest. Where do you situate yourself in this? So I think that the nature of grad school, at least for me, it seemed to be that you end up becoming a tree. <laughs> you become very focused, and that's, a, like, I guess, how you get hired and things like that. But um, I'm more optimistic that there's a lot of data if you want to try to see the bigger picture and like whatever can help you. It's fun to be able to, be, to play the long game now. Um, so fingers crossed you can be less tree-like. <laughs> That idea of collaborating uh, within your discipline and, and beyond your own discipline, you know, that's essentially what Perimeter Institute was created for. You, you have people from all these different sub-disciplines coming together under one roof. How, how important is that, even if you're in the weeds on a specific problem, to be surrounded by people who are working on different but perhaps related problems? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the the best part is just um, you get inspired by, by different fields, right? I mean, they have such different concepts, concepts and ideas that, you know, you, yeah, I, I, I view it as kind of like, almost like getting inspired by art or music. Just, it's, it's often so different that um, it's like a fresh way of looking at your, your own field. Mm -hmm. And Sabrina, you're our newest faculty member here at Perimeter. Uh -oh. uh, can you speak to that idea of, of being under the same roof, working together with people in different I mean, I love my quantum fields and strings group. I think like <laughs> I'm a little bit more like trying to like make sure that they they're considered just as cool when it comes to fundraising as the quantum matter because you guys have all of this. And no, I'm sorry, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but um, no, it's great. It's been lovely being here. Sabrina, were you uh, were you always dedicated to celestial holography, or did you take the big picture uh, first and then specify? I would say that it's more by chance too. I mean, like you somehow bet on. I mean, at some point, it's kind of crazy how much your lucky things work out or not. Um, I mean, because it came out of this the the PhD research, so a lot to my advisor there. Um, I don't know. I think it's. I would definitely say that it just I guess happened where I happened like. My, 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 my advice, I guess, to anybody who's younger is like, let's try to be more informed about the big questions and pick where you want to go. And that's what I love about a master's program, because you're getting into grad school after you've had some breath and had a chance to really apply to a PhD program and doing exactly what I know to do. So um, I think that <laughs> I'm lucky it all worked out, but I, it, the, the way it was set up would be like, once you kind of go a track, you either have to like bet, like bet on it as a long term investment or um, pivot at a time where you're not sure. <laughs> so um, I'm just very happy that it's worked out nicely. Mm -hmm. There is so much information every single day. In, in physics alone, you go on the archive every morning, I assume there's new papers in your field, in every field, uh, with so much to take in. How do, you, how do you balance it? How do you know what to read carefully versus what to skim? Um, Sabrina, I'll start with you. <laughs> This is 8.30, except for on Mondays, or like, yeah, like 9, um, but yeah, so uh, at night. Um, so I guess what I would do is, honestly, it's a little bit bad where you essentially, I guess, go for the things that you understand better, because then when you read it, it's more fun, because you can understand the details and appreciate it. Um, so uh, I would not say I'm the best <laughs> at, at filtering in a way that I want to be in the future, um, but I do... Um, it gets more and more fun, I think, as you get older. I think it was one funny thing is like, a, so at Brown, uh, they would have all of the grad students like have to look at the archive every day. And when I was younger, and I, you'd hear people doing this, you'd feel like ashamed. You're not like interested in the archive every day. And eventually, you're, like you are really interested in what's on the archive every day. And so it's really fun to to um, see how the, the kind of ideals that you wish, like as a good researcher, I wish I was at that, um, can come about rather than be something that you're just forced to do. So. Um, I enjoy reading, look, looking at what's in the archive, but I'm uh, ashamed to say I still like only <laughs> care a lot when it's like either someone I know or like related to what I like understand well. So, mm -hmm. at some point, was decided like I had done a couple of papers and I wanted to learn more because I was always like embarrassed by how little I understood at talks, yada yada. So I would just read things and like. Uh, I don't know. Like I, I would pile up everything. I'd print out everything I could, like even like print out the books on Springer, uh, and like print them out, and I have this pile and pile and pile. It grew like to like three feet tall of things just to show myself. Like I'm learning something. I got to be learning something if I'm reading all this crap. <laughs> uh, and a little like stuffed moose to the top or whatever. And then I'd put like stickers on the textbooks that I read cover to cover. And it's just like, what am I doing? 
<laughs> like you try really hard to be like, oh, I like, let's pick up a chemistry book. Oh, cool. Like it's all like basically like an of physics in the beginning. That's fun. Uh, but like you, at some point you don't observe things versus then when you realize like, oh, I, like I know something technical and I can try to basically do a branding exercise to turn some of the stuff um, um, in, in the bootstrap papers uh, into a celestial language. And you learn so much more by just actually caring and applying something than you do just trying to acquire expertise. That is almost, it's almost, it's embarrassing but also reassuring because it's like at some point when you're in this like, like, you know, like pile that's taller than you in the desk and you have nothing to show for it, it's like, oh my God. But at some point, just, just do what you like and keep, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I always um, think that's more of an age thing than a, than a country thing. Right? You, you go to elementary schools, and they, they have their hands up all the time. They yeah, want to exactly. answer every question because they're not at all worried about being no, wrong. Exactly. There was no such thing as yeah, being wrong. And you go to a middle school where puberty is reached, and, and you are so afraid of being wrong. And this is the hump that we have to get over, um, that we have to you know, get past that stage. or Either we let them have that stage, but then somehow bring it back that it's okay to be wrong. But it could be more socialization than actually growing up in the sense that like kids are not told like they're dumb because they don't know something. People appreciate that their children are learning, and I think that you can socialize out a lot of um, like eagerness to ask questions if you mm -hmm. create an environment that does that. Yeah, how much of a, a scientist's job is saying I don't know, I, I don't get this, and, and reaching out to others? That, I mean, honestly, the people who do, <laughs> as you can see, they actually ask questions. Like, that's a more efficient way to learn, and I think once you realize it's more efficient, even if you look like an idiot, uh, and it'll help you in the long run, just, yeah, you can get over a lot of pride. Now, I'm curious um, what non-scientific pursuits each of you has that helps you get out of the, uh, the hyper-specific problem and truly see the big picture, the big picture of life and the other things that matter. Do you have hobbies or things you do to... Uh, to, to reset your brain? Sabrina, I'll go with oh, you sure. first. I used to have, oh my God, <laughs> I've gone through hobbies. So my attitude is I like to try to see how hard it is to become, like do something poorly and then be able to appreciate the expertise in that or not uh, for, for whatever the conclusion is there. Um, I'm, I'm shitty at everything, but I do have in my office like a, the piano and a guitar and a 3D printer. Cause um, I don't know, I just like to see like actually what goes into making something. Um, and also, it's really fun to see yourself, even if you want to do something pretty poorly, like how you can learn without consciously trying to learn the thing. And so it kind of, I guess, emphasizes how you should be doing problems instead of just reading things to learn something when you can like see yourself visibly getting better at something. Um, so uh, there's that. But my current hobby is this, like finding all the string theorists type stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I said non-scientific. <laughs> no, but that, that's, not, that's not scientific. Oh, come on. I'm like, I'm not going to write some sort of like, I mean, like, uh, like I'm not going to go in that, that uh, archive yeah. category. <laughs> would like to hear all your opinions on the extent to which there is value in doing theoretical. Do I have to defend high energy theory? <laughs> 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 okay, what's your opinion on math? Like, let's go. I mean, to me, if anything, there's something beautiful about something just being self consistent and true in that sense. And it's a purer truth than what an experiment's able to measure. And so that's why I love it. But that's not to say that it's uh, like, to me, you know, it's, it's really cool when like the, like, you know, trying to understand the fundamental laws of nature can be coupled to things that affect like people or engineering with, like, in shorter time scales. And at some point though, that's gonna decouple and that doesn't mean that suddenly you shouldn't be doing these like very like abstract things because it's amazing how far consistency can take you. And I think that it, I mean, even if you just try to like see like how, I mean, like if we're doing tests of GR now and how long ago that was, like, I mean, like we're the future in some sense.